So now let's solve this interesting question and um, electric field. So um, you know sometimes I always tell you to say it's very important for for you to understand the question before you even start solving. So here's the question: An electric field of 100,000 newton per coulomb causes the five grams point charge to hang at 20 degrees angle. What is the charge? On the ball okay so now think of this let's first understand the question we have got electric field which is making this 5 gram charge or we can say a ball to be pointed at an angle now let's think of this so if something is pointed at an angle let's say this has been pointed at an angle and here is the angle here and here is our charge which we don't know the charge definitely and the angle is 20 degrees you know as it is swinging there is a force of gravity which is pulling this board down okay so that force I'm going to say it is mg okay now we are saying that this electric field it is causing this ball to hang at an angle so for it to cause this ball to hang at an angle meaning that it is moving in that direction meaning that is our electric field which is hundred thousand newton per coulomb why are we saying this because it can't go in this direction because we have been told that this electric field is the one which made this ball to hang at an angle meaning that it was pushing it in that way that's the reason why the electric field has to go in that direction it can't go to toward the west because if we are to say it's going toward the west meaning that we have to arrange our our free body diagram to be in this manner then it can go in that direction we should definitely get the same answer still okay so that's why when you understand the question especially physics it will be very much easy for you to to know what we are talking about now let's come up with a free body diagram the forces which are acting in this case one thing we have to remember is that where the electric field is pointing that is where the electric force is going very very important in this case okay so now <clears throat> let's have a free body diagram in this case so here is our ball so any force which is supported by the rope is what we call the tension force so in this case that will be my tension force I'll call it FT MG is here now this tension force is acting at an angle so we know that we'll have that we'll have that meaning that this is FTX and that is our FTY so this is the same as I've just done it like that so this Z which is being formed there the angle here is the same as the angle there therefore here the angle is 20 degrees meaning that using Sokatoa my FTX will be FT opposite sin theta and my FTY will be FT cos theta as simple as that so now it's now swinging we don't have the acceleration the net force is zero so there's the summation of all the forces in y direction we have FTY pointing up one minus MGY this minus is for MG because it's pointing downward so here zero since it's not moving this is FT FT can be replaced FTY can be replaced by FT cos theta minus MG I shift this to the other side same as I have got FT cos theta is equal to mg our goal is to find the charge here I don't have any any I've got the tension force and I'm not interested in the tension force let's call that one as equation one let's work around with the forces in x direction the summation of forces in x direction we have got the force which is moving in this direction which is the electric force so I'll put that minus there is FT moving now in that direction 
Now the tension force, the arrow here, when we go back to vectors, the arrow is there. That's why here is pointing up, then it has to go there. So the arrow for FTX is pointing toward the negative x axis. That's why it's negative FTX. Since it is not moving, this will be replaced by zero. So we'll have this minus FTX is FT sin theta. If I shift that to the other side, it's the same as in FT sin theta is equal to Fe that. Sometimes you're already confused. Why am I not shifting this to the other side? It's the same. In fact, here I've just shifted, but in a case of this, here I've shifted this to the other side. That's why it's like that. But here, why didn't I just shift this to the other side? It's the same thing. I shift this to the other side. It's the same as this. Okay. Then now, I'll call this equation 2. Now, let's remember this. These equations which we have just come up with here. One thing we have to remember, we want to find the charge. There is no equation which is giving us the anything to find the charge. So we should remember that electric field is also given by the electric force divided by a charge. So we can make electric force as a subject of formula. So it will be electric field times a charge. Meaning that where there is electric force, I can replace it with electric field times a charge. Because I have, I mean, I have the, the electric field and I want to find the charge. So this guy here is going to be replaced by this guy. So to create space, let me get rid of this. So the first equation we are saying Ft cos theta is equal to mg. Then the second equation is Ft sin theta is equal to electric field, electric force, sorry. Now let's get rid of this. I want to create space here. Now, we are saying that when there is electric force, we will replace it with electric field times the charge. Meaning that Ft sin theta will be electric field times the charge. Our goal is to find the charge. How can I eliminate the tension force? Let's make the tension force as a subject of formula in the first equation. In the first equation, which is Ft cos theta is equal to mg. Let's divide both sides by cos theta. Even here, cos theta. What do we expect? These will cancel. We will have Ft will be equal to mg cos theta. So where there is the Ft in this second equation here, I will replace mg divided by cos theta. So I'll say mg I've got it, divided by cos theta then times sine theta is equal to E Q. So what is sine divided by cos is tan. So we have mg tan theta is equal to E Q. Okay. Now now we have everything. We have got the angle, which is 20 degrees. We have the electric field. We want to find the charge. Divide both sides side by E, both sides by E. Therefore, our Q will be mg tan theta divided by E. Now, one thing I want you to understand is this. From these formulas, from this formula here, before we even continue, let me explain something. From these two formulas here, the first formula and this one, when I combine them, I get to find this. I get to have this one. mg tan theta is equal to eq. Here I can find anything which I want. I can find the mass, I can find the electric field, I can find the q. I can also find the electric force if I've been asked to find the electric force because I'll replace this with electric force. You see? So anything you're going to be asked here, as long as you reach at that point, you see what is missing. Then start now substituting. Plug in the values. See what is missing. Find it. As simple as that. 
So in this case, let's go ahead and see what our charge is going to be. The mass is uh, 5. Now this 5 we convert it to kgs is divided by 1000 or just say 5.0 times 10 to the power negative 3 then times 9.8 times 20 degrees divided by 100,000. What is our Q? So our charge will be equal to if I get my calculator 5.0 times 10 to the power neg 3 times 9.8 times 20 the answer I divided by a hundred thousand so I have to put it in scientific notation which is 1.78 times 10 raised to the power negative 7 coulomb that is the charge now if I want to leave my charge in microcoulomb I need to do times 10 raised to the power 6 meaning my answer in microcoulomb it will be 0 0.18 microcoulomb so you choose it's either you report your answer in this in coulomb or in microcoulomb both answers are correct as simple as that.